I used to walk or ride my bike to Lafayette Square all the time. As a matter of fact, before my siblings and I could go there on our own, my parents or friends of the family would take us to Puritans as a treat. Now, Puritans had a soda fountain, and they also had the storefront windows, which would be filled with one to five cent candies. The store clerk would open the inside door to the window platform and we'd stick our heads in, point our fingers and say, I want that, that, and that. Now, of course, Puritans was located in Lafayette Square next to the Esso gas station. And across the street was the golf station, I believe. Further into the square was Herb's Fish Market. And in back of that was a laundromat. Next to the fish market were two convenience stores, Arlington Fruit and Lafayette Fruit. And of course, in those days, they were the only stores that could be legally open in the area on Sundays. So they did a lot of business then. As a matter of fact, I remember my father working there on the weekends. Across the street was Marble Motors. They sold Oldsmobiles and Cadillacs. It's still to standing today is Perry's Package or Liquor Store. And where the bank is today used to be the 104 Club and I believe a flower shop. Bonton's Diner was there in Lafayette Square, where Tedeschi's is now. And of course, the statue of Lafayette was in the middle of the rotary. This is the center of the French community in Haverhill, actually. Lafayette Square was known as what before? Sergeant Square. Sergeant Square. Until the statue was brought in and dedicated. We're going to start here because it's, it's an easy entrance into the square from downtown. But uh, one of the reasons we're starting here is because of one of the uh, most famous places on the square, one of the most active over the years, has been in the building in, in back of us here. Okay. Now, one of the country's foremost comedians helped to get his start in that, in that business. Como's Coach Room, I believe they call it. <laughs> but Frankie Fontaine, and as a young man, breaking into the comedian business, places in the square. And this was one of the best known. Because he would come in and he'd put on a show and he'd entertain his friends and neighbors and probably his relatives. Right. But this was a very active place. He is. And of course, you and I are old enough to remember the Jackie Gleason show. And I would say that the Jackie Gleason show is what uh, made Frankie Fontaine the... Well, yeah, uh, national attention as a comedian. Yeah. He came into the bar where Jackie was attending bar as right. Crazy Guggenheim. <laughs> hey, no, he's in the back. I'll call him out. Hey, Craig! Hey, Joe. Hello, Mr. Jackie. And he had some really funny routines. And he'd sing. I yeah, mean, right, right, at the of. end of it. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. But he, that was one of his routines that he perfected and brought to national attention. But he had others before he left here. Oh, yeah? Uh, what was that? Well, that was John C. Savoni, <laughs> who won the lottery. <laughs> and he says, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just sitting around the house. <laughs> and he says, I had the numbers three, nine, seven, eight. And he went on and on and on and on. <laughs> but he did it. You know, he perfected those things here. And I can recall him doing it at the stadium at one of the big Havel festivals. Mm. And I, I remember seeing in movies, I saw him in one at the old Strand Theater. Is that with, right? Yeah, and he was, he had a pretty good part in one of the comedies down there, so. He got a, he got a great start here and, and perfected it. You know, he had, cause he had the talent to start with. Right. He's probably the most prominent person to come out of this area, out of this French community up till now. Very good. Now, we're going to take another angle of the square. Okay. And uh, we'll be right back. Where are we going to the hypotenuse? Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Larry, here we are in the middle of Lafayette Square, which was many, many years was the center of the French community in Haverhill. Uh, you have seen where we started at Como's Coach Room, and the, it is in the building which was created by the St. John the Baptist Association. Matter of fact, it was a there's a big enough hall so they could play basketball up there. They had a semi-pro basketball team that my uncle was involved in, and then uh, there were, of course, there were weddings and parties and all kinds of activities up there. The French veterans, the Franco-American War veterans, post had their quarters in that building, and they were a very colorful organization in blue uniforms, uh, and they a very good history of contributions to the community. 
I grew up, I spent a lot of time in the square as a, as a youth because my home was on Hill Day, a short distance away and it was an easy place to come to. It's a very, very active place with grocery stores, lawyers, banks, uh, all kinds of activity are down here. Uh, of course, you see the statue of Lafayette that was dedicated first in 1932 and then again in September of 2004. We're right around the corner, in a sense, from the other centers of French activity. What was St. Joseph's Church is now All Saints, but it was for many years St. Joseph's and it was the French Church and just down the hill from there is St. Joseph's School, which is still St. Joseph's School, although it's part of the, I don't know how close it is to the parish, but uh, I grew up in a, in a society that included all ethnic groups, French, Italian, uh, Greek, Jewish, and of course Irish, who were around here too. But, uh, it was a multi-ethnic society, although it was dominated, of course, by numbers by the French. And it was a uh, it was a place that nurtured and created a lot of activity. The people were able to walk from here to the shoe factories, where they worked right down the and walk home, of course.